eliminate all this process? And how do we system? eliminate all of this? Yes. So that's what led to mental health. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you are the founder and director of mental health. Uh, yes. And so this background you've given us to experience with your with your grandma yeah. fed into you creating Mino Health. Mm -hmm. Now, what is Mino Health? What does it represent? Yes. Yeah, so. The central goal of Mino Health is to democratize quality health care. Basically, what we mean by that is we believe it's, it's, it's the right of everyone to have the best of health care possible on earth, regardless of their financial uh, background or class or anything. It doesn't matter. If the best health care Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos is getting, someone in my hometown or in your hometown should get exactly that. That is what we believe in. So how do we do that? Mm -hmm. uh, healthcare is expensive. The tools and systems they use is expensive. So we believe that if we use certain technologies, we can be able to get it at a, at a price that everyone can use and still be the best that is possible. So that's what led us to technologies like artificial intelligence, data science, as well as cloud computing. So combining those three, we use artificial intelligence for medical diagnoses, uh, prognosis as well as forecast. Okay. And then uh, we use hold data. On, on, oh, okay. okay. Before we even go into other things. <laughs> you work in artificial intelligence. Yes. Explain yes. to us simply what that is. What is artificial intelligence? Okay. So uh, in a very simple term, artificial intelligence is simply uh, the, the goal of endowing uh, machines with human-like or biological-like uh, intelligence. So that is the goal. Anything that we see in humans that we, we can term as intelligent uh, or an intelligent action, or even if it's not human, maybe in an, other animals, mm -hmm. how do we give machines this? Machines are good at adding up numbers faster than human beings could, but they are quite dumb if we are looking at intelligent action. So how do we give them these capabilities? That's all artificial So give me an example of a machine giving that kind of intelligence to do something. Yes. So. Currently, we have, uh, if, if most have been following the goal uh, with Google DeepMind, mm -hmm. uh, basically, there's a complex game where it's, it's impossible to code everything, to code the instructions. So everyone thought that it would take probably the next 20 years before machines will ever get close to human beings. But the best human Go player was from uh, one of the Asian countries, I think China, was defeated by an AI program. We've heard of the chess, which happened a couple of years ago. And then in our division, one of the most important uh, applications of AI, which is healthcare. So uh, instead of having a human being uh, be able to diagnose that, okay, you have social and so condition, you have an artificial intelligence system, be able to do that. Or just like you, the conversation we were having earlier, mm -hmm. instead of having human beings painstakingly go through some of these things to check if people are trying to traffic some of this drug, mm -hmm. you could have an AI system that basically uses a computer vision and looks at things and then can determine that, okay, this is an illegal drug, this is not an illegal drug, this person is trying to do this, or, yeah. I see. Yeah. So there are a number of systems. Tell us more about how you're able to predict if a female patient would develop diabetes in, in, in the next five years or not. Okay. So uh, we have a lot of six st systems, uh, both both uh, from the main system as well as from the research research department. So the one you are referring to is, uh, is, is one where uh, our system focuses uh, diabetes. So if you have a female patient, you, you ask certain uh, variables from them, and then from that you can predict if they are going to develop diabetes in the next five years or not. So this is based on a research that was done, and so you have data that was collected, and then you train artificial intelligence to be able to do that. It, it, the point needs to be made that uh, even though artificial intelligence is broad, the one we are spe specifically using, which is... Uh, connectionist or neural network deep learning, you hear a lot of names for mm -hmm. it. We don't instruct uh, the system what to do. We just collect a lot of data and then give it all this data and then it goes through the data on its own and from this is able to learn all what it needs to learn. Even better than we, we could. Interesting. Yes. Hold that thought for me for just a moment. If you're just joining us, you listen to Morning Star Hour and Star 103.5 from my guest in the studio, uh, is helping us to understand how we can apply artificial intelligence to healthcare in Africa. In fact, uh, his name is Darlington uh, Ahiale Akogo. He's the founder and director of AI at Mino Health. 
and we will surely find out how else we can make this bigger and better for our nation than even for our healthcare provision as a country. But it's now time for science news. Good morning, Regina Malibati. Good morning, Francis. Okay, tell us, tell us the latest in the world of science. Well, so for today's edition, according to new research, men's testosterone levels are largely determined by the environment during childhood. Men who grow up in more challenging conditions where there are lots of infectious diseases, for example, are likely to have lower testosterone levels in later life than those who spend their childhood in healthier environments. And that's according to a new research. Now, the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens has opened its new facilities located at the University of Ghana. The center, which is one of two centers of academic excellences, has in the past two years produced world-class research and with the opening facilities promises to deliver even more research relevant to Ghana with global impact. Interesting. The, the, the first story caught my attention, the testosterone levels. Yep. So uh, research is showing that mm -hmm. there is a correlation between uh, the testosterone level and where you grow up as a child. Interesting. So I guess it needs to, you know, direct our attention to, to it. environments. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Regina Bollywood. And you'll be back with the science facts in 10 minutes. Thank you for your time for the science news. Uh, let me return to Darlene Timmons with us in the studio, founder um, and director of AI at Mino Health, uh, <laughs> joining us this morning. Darlene Tim, thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. Um, hmm. <laughs> Some hospitals are currently digitizing all their records. Are you working with the Ghana Health Service on this? Maybe you can help them flag up some potential cases. Currently, uh, Ghana Health Service, right? Yeah. We are working with a segment of it. Uh, it's related to, as, as a very direct body, I think a National Catholic Health Service. So mm -hmm. we are working with them to run some trials and tests for thoracic diseases. So... Uh, unlike the, the, the system we are talking about earlier, we are now more interested in using medical images because they are very much direct. It comes from the system that takes, in this, takes this image. The system just analyzes the image and is able to detect whatever condition is, is able to uh, find. Okay. Yeah. So why is it important for you to be able to collect a lot of information? Okay, thank you. Uh, because... We, we do generate a lot of data mm -hmm. in all our interaction. Healthcare, yes. But then even right here, as we are, we are discussing, we are generating a lot of data. And that data, we don't use it for anything. And just not using it for anything doesn't mean much. But the fact that there's so much we could do with such data, mm -hmm. So much we could do with that data. I remember when you were having your earlier discussion, you asked him a uh, certain thing about a quarter, quarterly uh, amount, and he said they don't collect it. Yeah. We don't collect he any data. He doesn't have it here. Uh, yeah, so it's unfortunate, but there's so much data that is generated, and we can once we harness all that data, mm -hmm. we can be able to first of all predict certain behaviors. In China, they they have systems that are able to uh, identify criminals. It's because they collect data. Even take it take it a step further. We can go to a, go to the point where we can predict. Uh, criminal behaviors just by collecting data. So that's how important data. In the healthcare scenario, it means life and death because certain conditions, they, once you discover them, once they are obvious and you can find them, it's too late. It's only when you detect them early on that you can be able to prevent them. So yeah. that, those are the benefits of data. Does it, does it explain why Epidemics hit us in Africa quicker than anywhere else. Oh yes, oh yes. I mean, apart from the the fact that we have a, a very uh, strange system where we we are too connected. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing we are connected, but we are too connected, and we don't have systems to, to organize and prevent certain things quickly. But then, yeah, we don't collect enough data. We don't even uh, detect some of this. Uh, interesting brother, because uh, one a friend of this show, I don't know if you remember him, Gameli Ajaho. Yes. Yes. He and I are actually uh, working on something where we are trying to apply artificial intelligence to uh, outbreak detection and forecast mm. in Ghana here. And so I remember yes. Him. I remember yes. Him. I yes, do. Yes, I do. Yes. I do. Interesting. Interesting guy. Okay, so um where do you where do you where do you get your data from? And is it secure? 
Yes, so our data comes from uh, various sources. We work with researchers and academics in Ghana and then abroad. So uh, sometimes we come from these uh, research facilities in the university. So it might be the US and other. Sometimes you have uh, certain health organizations in uh, Western countries that might allow you to use your data if you request for it and you tell them what you want to use it for. Mm -hmm. And then in currently as we are establishing uh, sort of a relationship with National Catholic Health Service, yes, we are going to use some of their data, anonymized data for testing. But then I would like to say this, uh, National Health Service, the main body itself, should be a bit more... <laughs> We are a bit more welcoming. I should just say that. Uh, yeah. Let me leave it at that. On the issue of security, uh, yes, you have to take certain actions if, if you are going to be handling people's data. First of all, you need to ask yourself, do you really need their demographical information? Or do you need their true identity? Do you need their names? And if you don't need it, leave it out. Mm -hmm. Anonymize the data. So for what we do, we don't need your name or anything like that. The AI does, has absolutely no use of it. So when we are dealing with images, you just name it 001, 002, no names. We don't need that. And that's fine. And that's fine. And and going on further, you have to ensure there are, there are cyber security uh, systems that you need to put in place and actions that you need to keep taking to mm -hmm. ensure that people's data are always safe. It's a huge responsibility to, 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 to have people's data entrusted into okay. you, to you. This all sounds very innovative, quite yes. frankly. So yes. what difference will it make if we're working closely with our current health systems on this? A lot of difference, a lot of difference. Yeah. Like uh, some of those issues, I was speaking to someone yesterday and we we're talking about the, the no bed syndrome, as you call it. Yeah. <laughs> and so we were talking about the fact that what if we had a system where automatically, uh, sorry, automatically you have uh, all the beds that are in each hospital recorded. And so before you head to the hospital, you know if there's a bed available or not. I mean, there's just some very simple direct solution. Beyond that, we, we could literally be able to diagnose several conditions. There are very, very few radiologists in Ghana, that's mm -hmm. a fact. And so if we were working with them, people in the villages who have conditions and they never know about it, and then unfortunately they have to die, and then someone has to say it's someone's grandmother in the villages and all that mm -hmm. stuff, we could eliminate all that seriously if we, have, if we are working with them and we have all the systems in, in the various towns and villages across Ghana. Darlington, yeah. can AI really outperform doctors in diagnosing diseases? And if so, will, will doctors be out of jobs in the near future? <laughs> Not in all cases. I mean, uh, outperform is, is, it has to be very narrowly defined. So, like uh, some system, currently we want to test some thoracic diseases, compare the AI systems with uh, radiologists in Ghana. Certain people have, have, have uh, compared for pneumonia, and then they found out that the AI system actually performs better. But then these are narrowly defined domains. And so one thing you have to keep in mind is doctors are not some sort of a narrowly defined, deep, they are generalized system. So yeah. it is not to replace them currently anyway. It is supposed to make their jobs easier and then to aid them. So it's just, it's, it's kind of similar to when you had a, those uh, before ATM machine, a anytime you want to retrieve money, you have to go to the decks, and that was very, very painful for those who work there because mm -hmm. it's monotonous, it's repetitive, it's boring. But then, now at least for the most part, they get to reduce the amount of work, and people just slot it in the ATM machine. So, and I guess sort of similar, yes, okay. Yes. So, what predictions can you make? about my future health and what information would you need for me to make better predictions? Yes, so currently if we are just using medical images we can diagnose and then uh, forecast a lot of conditions from uh, thoracic diseases and then uh, cancer, various types of cancer, You so many of them. But then once we, we are looking at just collectively analyzing all of your data, mm. there's, there's hardly any condition, condition that we can't uh, forecast or even at least say that okay maybe you are likely to, to, to develop this so the doctor should look further into it I see. there's so much potential or even uh, I mean the truth of the matter is we all really don't like going to the hospital it's not just me That's true. <laughs> so what if as we are home as we have with the health apps on uh, our Samsung's and then uh, Apple devices and all that mm -hmm. they collect data like when 
your sleeping habits and all this it influences the conditions that you develop and then uh, you can actually uh, find some vital signs just with your thumbprint so all this can be collected whilst you are in the home and then collecting data over time you can train ai systems to be able to predict all sort of conditions so so yeah. much potential <laughs> How much impact are you having with mineral health so far, both in and outside the ac academic cycle? Uh, yes. So as I was, I was saying earlier, we are currently w working with uh, one of the, the National Health Service Division, uh, specifically National oh. Catholic okay. Catholic Health Service. Mm -hmm. So we are working with them to run some trials, and and in all honesty, that was that was quite difficult to to eventually get to. We had to learn some some things about how Ghana works. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, so yes, over time we we yeah, we've we've managed to get some some strong relationships to progress this sort of things in the health sector. Mm -hmm. And as far as the academic sector, we've published a lot of research papers that are as collaborating with researchers in K KNUSC, University of Ghana, uh, universities in the U.S. and Europe, and so there's so much ongoing, which which is quite interesting. It's all interesting. Okay, work. talk about things that are on going and are interesting. I understand you girls also has plans of opening a new center dedicated to AI in Ghana. Mm. What about will you have on what you're doing? Yes, so that's interesting. I think there'll be room for a lot of collaborations because when I read the, uh, the uh, announcement and everything, they said that they are willing to uh, assist people in the space and all that and, and we are about the only people in the space. So yes, I, I see and I, I'm actually casually familiar with one of the directors i know him from some uh, ai facebook group and so yeah so yeah there will be a lot of collaborations and if maybe there might be some small clashes here and there that should be interesting <laughs> classes is it <laughs> classes is it yeah i mean but yeah I, th I i think at the end of the day we all just want to solve issues and and one thing people need to realize google ai as much as is interesting is is strictly mostly driven by research so mm -hmm. yeah they'll publish a lot of papers but i don't see them really trying to go a step further and say okay we are going to solve healthcare and they are more into like some generalized uh situation so they might work on a bunch of things that are so far off and mm -hmm. as far as mineral health we are strictly directed to solving healthcare issues in issues. africa okay the vice president seems to be very keen on using technology for everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's assume you have an audience with him now what would you tell him Oh, I'll have to say that uh, they should be willing to work with uh, people who want to solve issues in our country and then people who are capable of solving issues in our country. Mm -hmm. So, and, apart, and also, uh, we should start thinking about artificial intelligence. We should start thinking about uh, fourth industrial revolution. These sort of things, if we don't have discussion about them, I mean, there's a huge for us to be honest with with each other mm -hmm. with ourselves we have to face the fact that there's a huge gap between us and western countries and even the eastern countries it's huge now but as you've heard from uh, the likes of putin and then uh, the whole chinese uh, uh, meeting and everything they had about mm -hmm. ai whoever is able to develop ai systems be able to uh, win at it is going to, in a sense, win, win the world. Run the world. Uh, yes, so if, if we don't have this discussion and we think the gap now is so far, if we don't, and 20 years down the line, it will be so far off, and it will have some repercussions against us. So let's have these discussions. I mean, uh, interesting discussions go, go on in Ghana, but not enough on, on things like fourth industrial revolution, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. data science, and all this stuff. So I wish uh, they would be willing to have these discussions. Yeah. yeah. Regina is back. Before I ask you what the future will be for mental health, what's our, what's our science fun fact for today? Well, so our science fact is uh, linked to the conversation we're having. We're yeah. talking about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And Francis, I have a question for you. Do you know why uh, we use female voice for artificial intelligence? No. You don't? Okay, so let me educate you. So our science fact for today. Most artificial intelligence use a female voice because the female voice is considered less threatening. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Imagine hearing my voice. It depends on what female voice you <laughs> yeah. hear. Imagine hearing my voice. Uh, it's less threatening. Quay, quay. Please, I've heard other female voices that, that sound interesting. But anyway, oh, please. Thank you, Regina, for the fun facts for today. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Back to you, Darlington. 
what's the future like for you here uh, with, with mental health in the next five years? What are you seeing to do different in Ghana? Yes, so in the next five years, we should already be very much deployed. We have our systems deployed in Ghana mm -hmm. uh, to a degree, and some of them, the, the, the major hospitals should become standardized that you use artificial intelligence to simplify the works of radiologists. And then in places where they don't even have radiologists, uh, most of them should already be using an AI system for, for this. So we should already make it that we, we are already uh, mining data and then using it to, for the betterment of our health. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. I want to say a big thank you to you for joining us this morning uh, here on Morning Star. Darlington Ahiale Akogo. The founder and director of AI at Minu Health. Yeah. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you too. I'm grateful that you were able to take the time to join us here for a very, a very insightful conversation about how we can apply artificial intelligence to healthcare in Ghana. And